Hello and welcome to my lab. It is time to put the electronics on the oven. I've got a bit of a plan scribbled here together, which we'll get into. But as an overview, there's going to be three panels. There's going to be a panel for the high voltage, because I like to separate that all out, and there's quite a bit there, so that's what we'll, we will be doing first. Uh, then there's a panel for the microcontroller and the sensors coming into it. And then finally, a panel for the actual touchscreen, the HMI, Human Machine Interface. So uh, let's just go look at the electronics for the high voltage panel. Okay, I have everything laid out here in order to fit it into the panel. So you can see this is the inside of the uh, power panel. And uh, we'll just kind of walk through it in logical order. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. So you've got the uh, 240 volt plug here, and this is the silly North American one, so it is what it is. And uh, what I'm going to do is have that come in through uh, this nice long wire. I'm, I just bought a, an extension cord, cut off the leads, and uh, we'll put this on. So once that comes into the panel, um, we'll just use these. These are called wire glands, or I call them wire glands anyway. They're uh, nice, kind of like a collet, if you know what that is, where the wire will come in and then you clamp down on the wire. That holds it in place nicely. Once the wire comes into the panel, it'll have to go through this switch and this is a two-pole switch rated for motor disconnect and what that means is it's it's capable of handling uh, inductive loads and much heavier switching. So I try to use that whenever I'm using a lot of current or anything. Then directly after the switch we'll use this 20 amp breaker. I'm planning on using 15 amps from the wall, and so if we get to 20 amps, well, something's clearly wrong, and this will break the connection for us. That's just another added layer of safety, of course. The lab itself has a breaker on there, but you always want to add, at least I always add, a breaker to the machine because you really want that several layers of safety, especially when you're dealing with higher voltage and higher amperage. Then from there, we'll go ahead and take it into this little power supply. I like these little Meanwell power supplies. If you ever need a power supply, I just go to arrow.com and look up a power supply of the correct voltage and rating. And uh, there's just a huge selection on there and they're all really cheap. This was probably, I think this was $10 or so. Um, but this will give us 12 volts and five volts from the same supply. So this is going to power uh, everything that isn't that high voltage. So this will give us um, the power for our microcontroller, power for sensors, and it will also, the 12 volts will power our HMI. But let's get to the business end. Right here is what's really going to do the business. So this is a solid state relay, it's a triac type. This will allow us to take a small signal from the microcontroller and pulse width modulate the uh, 240 volts across the heating element. That way we can vary the power going into the heating element and therefore the heat going into the box. This is going to have a heat sink just mounted on the back of the power panel and then this will be mounted like so. But the issue with these guys is that when they do fail, they fail closed, which means they fail connected. So if this failed, the mains would just be permanently connected to the heating element. Uh, we don't want that. So I'm adding some redundancy here. I'm just gonna add an old fashioned clunking relay. And this, you wouldn't be able to pulse modulate this because it would wear out too quickly. However, we can use this as a safety latch. The microcontroller will have to click this in then pulse width modulate the other one. That way if something goes wrong and we just want to turn the element off, then we can just let go of this. And this is rated for much more current than we're going to use and much more voltage, so. so we should be quite safe with this. Then I'm also considering adding a current shunt resistor, uh, partially because I'm curious what, uh, what the amperage is going to look like once we're pulse width uh, modulating this thing. And also it, it would add another safety um, another level of safety because if we see a ton of current flowing and we're not telling a ton of current to flow then clearly something's wrong and we can disconnect the power. If you don't know what a current shunt is, it's a basically a resistor. It's a small value resistor and an interesting thing about electronics, if you don't know, is that the voltage across a resistor is directly proportional to how much current is going through that resistor. 
if you want to know more, you can always just Google it. But that's the principle that I'm going to use uh, to bring that signal into the microcontroller so that we know how much current is flowing through the uh, heating element. So I'm going to finish laying out this panel and put it together, which means it's montage time. First, I will mount the switch. This hole will make room for the lever of the switch. Then with some smaller holes, I can mount it. The breaker is going to need a bit of this DIN rail to mount. If you're using a larger panel with a lot more stuff in it, it's convenient to use a lot of this DIN rail and just mount everything to that. But here, this is the only thing that we have that mounts to DIN rail. So I will just mark the holes out for this DIN rail and then for the relay. This whole thing is going to involve a lot of drilling and tapping, so for sanity's sake, I'm going to skip most of it. Now for the power supply. I had to design and 3D print a little mount. That mount will be fixed to the side of the enclosure, then the power supply will be fixed to that. For the heatsink, I just bolted it to the screws that were conveniently already there. For all the higher amperage wiring, I'm just going to be cutting pieces of this extension cord. With most everything in the box, I will go ahead and mount it to the oven. We will be using a K-type thermocouple for temperature feedback. To mount this, I'm just going to drill a hole in the insulation that is just large enough to fit the probe. Then I can wire the heating element. Before finishing the power panel, I will need to attach the controls panel. This is a small box that will contain the PSOC 5 and also the thermocouple amp. You will notice in the schematic that there's a transistor in here as well. This is going to be used to drive the relay in the power panel.
The smaller holes in this box will be for two cables to the power panel and the thermocouple. The large hole will actually be a conduit to the HMI panel above. The HMI panel is just going to contain the HMI, the power to the HMI, and the USB cable that runs from the HMI to the microcontroller. The panel is just going to mount with two bolts. Now, with the flex conduit on the top, the nut to the connector actually interfered with the fit of the HMI, so I will actually be gluing this one into place. Okay, back to populating the controls panel. This is the thermocouple amplifier. This uses a one-wire communication that will go directly into the microcontroller. This is the first cable going over to the power panel. It contains the 12 volts and 5 volts from the power supply, along with the signals to the power panel. The second cable is a butchered Ethernet Cat5 cable. I'm just going to use one of the twisted pairs for the feedback off of the root shunt resistor. If I had enough wires, I would actually just have put them in the previous cable. I'm just going to route the thermocouple cable along the frame and into the controls panel. Running cables through these conduits can sometimes take a bit of strategy. Now for the tedious job of connecting all the things. I first connect all of the 5 volts, 12 volts, and 0 volts. Then I hook up the thermocouple data line because it was just hanging there. Now for the transistor that will power the element enable signal. This has to be a transistor because the relay in the other panel needs more current than the PSOC can provide. To make this easier for myself, I took a transistor and soldered the resistor to the base pin. Then I covered it in heat shrink to make it somewhat modular. The USB will provide a serial port between the microcontroller and the HMI. And finally, I will connect the shunt resistor. Then put the cover on and all the mess goes away. It's magic. Here's what the shunt resistor actually looks like. You attach the power across the two posts, then you sample the voltage across the two posts. The power input gets wired into the switch, and the ground wire will get wired into the entire metal frame. This is really important, because if something shorts to the frame, you want it to short to ground and blow a breaker, rather than simply hanging out at high voltage, 
waiting for some unsuspecting victim to touch the frame and have a very bad day. Here I'm prepping the low voltage connections to the power supply before running the cables from the control panel. Now here's a problem. I didn't even think about whether these smaller wire glands would fit in these holes. I guess I will have to use one of the larger glands to fit both wires. That's kind of lame, but I really just need these to keep the wires from being tugged out, so it still works. On these small ethernet wires, I'm going to fold them over themselves twice. This will allow me to crimp connectors onto them. This is a bit of a hack, but there's really not a reason not to do it. Now I will cut the black cable to size, then I can pull it out to strip the sleeve back. When stripping sleeves off of cable, you want to just score into the sleeve partially, then wiggle it back and forth to break the rest of it. That way you won't nick any of the wires inside. Once that is prepped, it is the same drill. I will connect the power wires first, then deal with the signals. This extra wire I've attached will go out the back to the solid state relay. I don't need this silly pink wire, so I will just stuff it in the back. Then this yellow wire is the one coming from that transistor in the other panel. That goes directly into the relay, and the green wire goes out back to that same solid state relay, which I will now wire up. This panel was not designed to be clean, but one should always at least use some zip ties. There, that just leaves the HMI. It is a snug fit. I don't want it to be wiggling about. Well, there's all the wiring anyway. I really wanted to get the wiring and the program done in this episode, uh, but life kind of showed up and said no. So we'll have to be covering the program in the next episode. Uh, at least there does definitely seem to be enough there to cover an entire episode uh, between the control uh, program and the HMI program or the, the human machine interface program. Plus, there's going to be a bunch of testing we have to do. Uh, the first time we start it up, of course, it's probably going to billow smoke as it gets rid of all of the impurities in the chamber. So we'll have to start it up outside, and then we'll start doing some testing. We'll give it uh, 500 watts and see where it comes up to temperature, and 1,000 watts, and so on. And then we'll take that uh, data that we collect from those tests, and we'll show you how we, we uh, use that to tune the control system. And... Uh, We'll of course be posting all of the program to GitHubs in case you're curious about it. Um, yeah, that's what we'll be doing next time. So uh, I guess we'll just see you then.